The UK has always welcomed those who are fleeing persecution, regardless of whether they come through a safe and legal route. By definition, someone fleeing for their life will more often than not be unable to access a legal route. I don't think it's enough to say we will meet our requirements by sending people to claim asylum in Rwanda. And this matters because of the reputation of the UK on the world stage. And that matters because the UK's ability to play a role internationally is based on our reputation, not because we are British, but because of what we stand for and what we do. Yeah, yeah. My second concern relates to the implications for modern slavery. I'm grateful to the fact, the fact that Number 10 has offered to discuss this with me, and I hope we can find some resolution. But as it currently stands, we are shutting the door on victims who are being trafficked into slavery here in the UK. If they come here illegally, they would not be supported to escape their slavery. And the Home Office itself recognises the damage this bill will do. In the explanatory notes, they make the point about the clauses 21 to 28 on public order disqualification. These provisions are subject to a sunsetting mechanism so that they can be suspended should the current exceptional illegal migration situation no longer apply. In other words, we know this isn't ideal, but we've got lots of people coming illegally, we've got to do something, so the victims of modern slavery, if you like, will be collateral damage. I welcome the acknowledgement that this part of the bill could be reversed, but it could also then be reinstated. The Home Office knows this bill means genuine victims of modern slavery will be denied support.